Hello, my name is Dr. Bruce Miller, and I'm an evangelist, uh, but I'm also president of Atlantic Coast Baptist College and executive vice president of Independent Baptist Online College. And I've been in the ministry by God's grace, help, and mercy for 52 years. I've seen something happen, and it almost happened to me. And uh, it gets people out of the ministry or it causes people to get stuck. And that is that they get a higher position in the ministry that they desire. A higher position than what they're qualified for. What do you mean what they're qualified for, Brother Miller? Well, oftentimes two things. Number one, they don't know what they're doing and how to make it work. And number two, they may be doing it for the wrong reason. I started a church in Oklahoma City in 1980, and God really blessed. And we went through a hard time in the area economically. And uh, we'd win somebody to Jesus, train them, disciple them, and our church would grow. And then a bunch of them would get transferred out of state or their, their job would close down. And uh, several churches that started the year I started, uh, the Harvest Hills Baptist Church, which is still there in 1980, uh, closed down. And a lot of those men were better preachers than me. I think maybe better Christians than me. Uh, they, they were better trained than me. But one of them said to me, Brother Miller, how did, it seems like you always make the right decisions. I didn't. But it seems like you always make the right decisions. And uh, you know what to do. And I labor over those things and make the wrong decisions. And your church is growing and my church isn't. Uh, what what do you attribute that to? And he prayed a lot. He read his Bible a lot. He witnessed. Uh, what do I attribute it to? I got to thinking about that. And in Matthew 25, um, we, we have a reason that's given. You see, before I pastored a church and started a church from scratch and pastored it, uh, I had been a youth director part-time then a youth director full-time, then an assistant pastor, visitation pastor, youth director, and then the vice president of a Bible college, and then had preached in a number of churches. I averaged over 70 churches a year I was preaching in to represent the Bible college and preaching in revivals before I went to start the church. I'd already been in the ministry almost 10 years and had seen God grow ministries through me. Well, uh, the Lord says in Matthew 25 that a, uh, a certain man, a rich man, uh, called his servants together, and he was traveling out of the area, and he gave one five talents and one two talents and one one talent. You know this. <laughs> and when he came back, uh, the Bible says that the one that had five talents came and brought other five talents, and he gave them to his Lord. And as Lord said, verse 21 of Matthew 25, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many. He had proven himself. He knew what to do. And so now he gets to go from a few things, five talents, to many things. Well, the fellow that he gave two talents to, he came. And uh, he brought two more also. And his Lord said, verse 23, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many. Well, you know what happens after that. The one talent fellow came and said, here's your one talent back. I took care of it. And one thing I see is many, many men early in their ministries jump into the ministry with a lot of zeal. Uh, they listen to some podcasts. They they uh, learn from other guys their age who have never built really a Sunday school class, never built a church uh, from scratch. And uh, uh, then they flounder around and they still got that one talent though. Uh, the Lord wasn't too impressed with that. He took from that man, the one talent and uh, called him wicked and slothful and sent him out to get beaten. But notice that statement, thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Notice that statement. 
Um, before you get your position, your promotion into the ministry, your prestige, your power and authority, I want to ask you a question. What have you done? What makes you think you can pastor a church if you haven't even built a Sunday school class of adults? So I started as a youth director and my youth department grew. Oh, did it grow? It grew uh, from 35 to over 110, 12 people a Sunday. We would have on Sunday night, 45 to 60. We would have on Wednesday night, 45 to 60. And uh, we had young people going to Bible college, uh, sometimes as many as 10 or 12 a year. New kids going to Bible college, 40 some all together. Uh, you say, Brother Miller, what made you think you could just go and start a church from scratch? Well, I had been faithful over a few things, and I knew how to take a Sunday school class and uh, how to take a, um, a ministry, a Bible college, and uh, help a man, Dr. Clinton Brainine, grow it from um, 27 students, 220 students in four years. You see, a lot of times young men look and they want that bigger position. They want that promotion, that title, the prestige that goes with it. They want the power and the authority. But in Matthew 23, verse 10, 11, Jesus said it's not about position, power, and authority. It's about being a servant. He said, uh, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master even Christ, Matthew 23, 10. But he that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. You know what I did <clears throat> uh, for nearly 10 years before I went and started a church from scratch? I was a servant to Dr. Clinton Brainerd. I was a servant to Carl Ball. Those were men in the ministry. You know, David knew that he could slay. He could slay the giant. How did David know that? <laughs> He knew that. He told Saul. Saul said, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. But thou, for thou art but a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. And uh, uh, David said, uh, you need to know something. Thy servant, notice he was a servant to Saul, kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear. These are ferocious. Maybe a nine-foot-tall giant isn't as scary if you have slain a lion and a bear at the same time. And they took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him, and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and I smote him, and I slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. You see, uh, what makes you think you can defeat this giant, David? Because God helped me defeat the lion and the bear. People ask me, what makes you think uh, that your church will grow in Oklahoma City? And that church is still there today. People ask me that. And I said, well, God helped me grow a Sunday school class of teenagers, then a Sunday school class of couples, and then a Bible college. Yeah, the same God can can help me start a church with only $150 a month support and just trust God to go so many morning, afternoon, night and start a church. I, uh, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying don't aspire someday to be the pastor or the camp director if you're in a camp ministry or head of a, a Christian home for men or women. I'm not saying don't. Don't aspire to that. I'm not saying don't aspire to be the Christian school principal. If all you are is a teacher right now, you be faithful in teaching. You become an expert in education, and that'll help you be a better principal, you see. By the way, a great athlete out of high school was recruited by a great coach into a great program. And a man was interviewing him one day. And he said, so-and-so, your coach says that you have more potential than anybody he has ever recruited. What do you think of that? And uh, he held the microphone up to the athlete. And the athlete said, well, 
He says that. But he tells me something else with that. He says, you have more potential than anybody that I've ever recruited out of high school. But just remember, potential means you ain't done it yet. Be faithful over a few things and let God make you ruler over many. Potential, you ain't done it yet.